Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala ahlihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'um bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. You guys, today we have another special individual, a young person from our community, and that is, of course, Hiba Ali. Hiba, I believe, means gift in Arabic. Yeah, that's right. Nice, nice. Um, if you don't already know, Sister Hiba is part of the leadership team at VIP. I think, I don't know if you are the de facto, like, on the top of the pyramid, but... No, I'm up there. I'm the assistant coordinator, so I'm like, I guess you could say second, but... Yeah, all right, that's, that's all perfect. <laughs> Mashallah. And uh, she's also part of CORE Academy. And I have said this multiple times before, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, we at ISM CORE have been uh, immense beneficiaries of the talent and the skill that has come out of VIP. May Allah bless you guys. VIP is a young group of sisters who come together. They do their own programs, their terbiya, their events uh, with elegance and professionalism. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakah, sustain this beautiful effort, and allow you guys to grow, inshallah, and um, be a continuous means of benefit in the community. Khair, brother. I mean, that means a lot. And honestly, like programs like VIP and ISM Court, like can't even happen without amazing people like a staff manager. So thank you for making them possible. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept. May Allah make me better. May Allah make me better than what you think of me. Abu Bakr's dua. SubhanAllah. Okay. And um, you guys, as uh, I mentioned earlier, Sister Hiba is also part of CORE Academy. Well, her sister Aya Ali helps manage the CORE Academy. Then her brother mm -hmm. Muad Ali helps manage Sunnah <laughs> It's like a total blessed family. Like, you guys are a gift to the community. Speaking of gifts, mashallah. Um, mm -hmm. I've been meaning to ask you, Sister Hiba, with um, yeah. Sister Aya getting married, how's mm -hmm. life after Aya looking like? <laughs> you know, that's a very popular question. <laughs> um, I guess for one thing, like, it's going to be really sad because she's, like, my only sister, yeah. so. I thought you'd be excited, you know, me. more, uh, the entire Wi-Fi to yourself, more wiggle room in the house, no? I mean, yeah, that's exciting because I've never had my own room before, but uh, that's the one from. <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I, I can't even imagine. I, I don't know if Sister Aya even knows this, but like, I hope she does. Um, but I've grown, <laughs> I've grown to appreciate her so much. Um, her ihsan, I, her passion, sure. her professionalism. Like I've said this before, and uh, I'm going to say it on live. You know, a lot of times we get praise for Core Academy's aesthetics. And I feel like Core Academy's aesthetics are a reflection of your sister's elegance. It really is. And, um, She's really good and talented, mashallah. SubhanAllah. Uh, and um, I really hope Father, uh, forget hope, Father, you better take good care of her. Um, I'm sure he has seen how soul <laughs> Mu'ad is. So, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. Make them a coolness to each other. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. It's happening in August, right? Or the, it's, an, uh, it's uh, yeah, like at the end of July, beginning of August, so. Barakallah, yeah, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So you guys, today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about the life of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anh. And you guys, this is part two. And today, inshallah, we're going to finish his life. Last time, if you all remember, we talked a little bit about his relation. Well, we talked about how his mother enrolled him with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and how he got a head start, was able to memorize an extraordinary amount of hadith. And we talked about um, his worship as well. So there were different elements of his life that we discussed. Today, though, in the last session, I want to squarely focus on just one aspect of his life, and that is his relationship with the Prophet That's a really beautiful, beautiful aspect of his biography. Um, they had a really special relationship, a beautiful bond. And uh, let me just say at the outset that Anas had, man, like he had such a deep love for the Prophet You can't begin to imagine. I'm not capping for emotional points. Uh, I came across narrations and I was lost in thought and I'm hoping to kind of share some of those things with you guys. So when Anna started with the Prophet Salaam, you know, just like when you start with your Quran teacher, early on there's a level of intimidation, right? And then you hopefully get warmer in your relationship. So uh, Anas Radi Allah, he tells us, hadith comes in Sahih Muslim, first-hand account. He says, when I started with the Prophet Wasallam, once the Prophet Salaam sent me on an errand, and he's like, let me just tell you, I was not in the mood. But when the Prophet asked me, I didn't know how to say no to the Prophet of God. So I was like, whatever, you know, let me just get it done. So he's like, en route, as I'm headed to my errand, I pass by a playground where kids are playing and I totally get distracted. I'm like, let me just do a quick pickup game and, you know, I'm going to get the job done later. So mm -hmm. 
he gets distracted, it was supposed to be a small detour, Anas ends up spending hours there, completely forgetting in the process why he came out in the first place. Now, Sister Hiba, we're all guilty of this to some degree, aren't we? Like, has it ever happened to you? You picked up your phone to do a specific task. 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, you're still on YouTube. Has that ever happened? That yeah. happens, yeah. <laughs> I, I literally forget why I picked up my phone. Like, uh, like Allah, forgive me. Sometimes my wife will be like, hey, uh, can you fill up my water bottle? And uh, I'll go to the kitchen. I'll fill up my water bottle and come <laughs> empty-handed with hers. It's, it, um, <laughs> so, you know, know oh my God. for real. I, I mean, Anas is young. He's probably like 11, 12. I don't know how old he is at this point, but he's super young. So obviously he's, he lost track of his mission. So he says, while I'm still playing, I feel someone behind me. And he's like, lo and behold, I turn around. And it's, you, you guessed it, is the messenger of God. But what's interesting, he says, when I turned around and looked at him, Hadith in Sahih Muslim says, Wahuwa I turned around and looked at him and he was smiling. You know, smiling. Like my eternal love for my Desi uncles, I'm picturing right now, what would be a reaction of a prototype Daisy uncle? My, my estimation, the conversation would look something like this. Beta, I asked you for one job. One job. When I was your age, I was walking three miles to the school, delivering newspaper on the way back to finance my education. And I asked you for one thing. <laughs> and the kill trip starts. <laughs> you know? Hello. Um, but you know, the problem is like smiling, like being very gentle. And then he's like, Anas, um, what did he say? He's like, yeah, Unais, you know, Unais, you know, his name is Anas, but you know how Arabs do this when they want to add love, they will add, make it a little bit more twist. They'll add Tasleer, Unais. It's kind of like in Urdu when you want to, somebody's name is Luqman, but the parents will be like, Mera Laddu, you know, it's like you add a little bit of love to it. So they're like, yeah, Unais, Adahabta haythu amartuk. did you get the job done? So now Anas is clever. He doesn't want to say no because, you know, that means confession. But then he can't say yes because that would be a lie. So what does he say? He's like, this is a, like in one sentence. He's like, yes, I'm about to do it. And then he's like, roadrunner out of there, mashallah. Um, so he came up, crafted a response where he's not lying. He's like, yes, I'm about to do it. And basically he got out of that situation, oh. got the job done. Um, so, you know, when I reflect on this story, obviously the Prophet system is nice to him because, you know, the Prophet system is the goat. But also because Anas is a volunteer, if you think about it. And um, I've, I've kind of learned, Sister Hiba, I don't know about you, I've learned that, you know, you don't want to expect too much from the volunteers. You know, you keep your expectations low, you're never disappointed. Is that how it works at VIP? How does it work at VIP? Okay, see, I mean, we train them. We don't really expect them to come in with experience, if that makes sense. So uh, we don't really expect much at the beginning, but at the end, you know, if we tell them, it's kind of like similar. Like if we, you know, tell <laughs> them like, space. okay, it's been an it's hour, you can finish. Uh, so I, I don't know, it's just. You can vent live, Sister Hiba, if you want. <laughs> I guess, yeah, it just kind of depends on the situation. Like at the beginning of the program, of course, like we had to train them, tell them like, okay, like, this is how you use, you know, Google Sheets if we're doing like the, the budget sheet. And then by the end of the program, you know, if they make like simple mistakes, like of course you might be like disappointed, but it's just a matter of taking the right approach. I don't know. SubhanAllah. It, it, it takes a, it takes a, it's an R almost doing nonprofit work. Um, Allah put barakah in the effort. With Anas, because the Prophet was gentle with him, his love grew for the Prophet little by little until it became very intense. Uh, Anas radiallahu anh, subhanAllah, I mentioned last time he memorized like some 2000 ahadith, but not only the fact that he's memorizing ahadith, man, he was so curious about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you know, you're only curious about people you admire and love. I, mm. I, 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 I guarantee you, this is gonna, if I go to my Islam school classroom right now, um, 20 teenagers sitting in front of me, and I'm like, <clears throat> if I were to just say, Giannis's t-shirt, jersey number, in a unanimous voice, collectively as one body, they're going to say 34. His height, 6'11", immediately. No, no qualms, no hesitation. Anas radiallahu anh, now look at this. Hadith in Tirmidhi tells us that Anas radiallahu anh used to tell his students that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam only had seven, 17 white hair in his beard. You know? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> can you imagine That's like so <laughs> gee, to, to actually keep track of that and to actually notice you know <laughs> i mean people forget their anniversaries i mean and here he's like keeping track of 17 hair <laughs> on the prophet is our deep um and subhanallah that love intensified over time when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away and also the alone used to reflect on that day that dark day he used to say, I remember the day the Prophet came to Medina. It's like the day he came to Medina, everything became illuminated. Everything became mm -hmm. beautiful and vibrant and joyous. And he said, as for the day he died, he's like, as if everything lost attraction. Everything became dull. Medina was like never the same. So his longing for the Prophet just kept increasing. And subhanAllah, one of his students, Mufanna ibn Sa'id, he used to say as Anas got older and older, I used to hear Anas radiallahu anh say that I, there, he used to say, Anas radiallahu anh, there isn't a night except that I see my beloved in my dream. And then it would mm -hmm. tear up. Because, you know, you dream about what you think about. And so he's literally seeing the Prophet every night. Can you imagine that? Constantly. Wow. I, it's it's hard because we're so distant and removed and we haven't experienced his life. It's not like random. We don't really that. like, we need to learn to honestly love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and just like learn about his life. Absolutely. And, like, and knowledge is the... You have the same love as they did. I'm sorry, cut you off. No, 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 no. You, you go ahead, please. I was just going to say like having the same love that they did, like you just mentioned earlier, to have like so much to tell about a person's life, you know, the way they walk, the way they talk, like, you know, a, Specific like physical features, subhanAllah, like subhanAllah. just the way that I don't know. In, in, in knowledge, I feel like knowledge is the first step. If you if you want to ever have if you want to have any hope of accomplishing or feeling that way, you know, I I, I personally I love Sirah. Like I, I don't know if you know, but the first course of Core Academy was Sirah, which was Young Life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, had it not been that I wanted to bring Sirah and Quran together. I obviously did see Tafsir as a second course, and because of the needs of our time, we're doing now dismantling doubt. But as soon as we're done with dismantling doubt, going back to Sirah, that's my fourth course. Like, I'm already announcing it because I, I, Sirah needs to happen. You know, without the love for the Prophet, Islam will always be a chore to you. You know, mm -hmm. it's just your parents' religion that got passed on to you like inheritance. You know, if you, you want to have that vested love and relationship, it comes with the love, deep appreciation for who the Prophet was. That's why whenever converts, they're like, hey, what, what do you recommend? First thing I recommend is a podcast on Sirah, either by Sheikh, um, either by Mufti Kamani or Salah Durhman Murphy. Get on a podcast, listen to the Prophet life. That's going to glue your spirituality, you know, solidify you in your commitment to this deen. That's what Anas had. Have now, you gone yes, through... Uh, oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Nadia said, may Allah increase uh, our love for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and allow us to experience his love in hereafter. I mean, I mean, have you gone through Sira Sister Hiba or like a book you recommend or a podcast you've come across or a lecture series? Um, I, like, I personally love listening to Yasir Qadi and I, I know he has a, a Sira series. I just don't know like how, like how, yeah, how he does exactly or how long it goes into. Um, but personally, I like haven't like read like any books about it, so I don't really have any recommendations. Gotcha. Sheikh Asif Qadi Sira is arguably, in my opinion, the best on the internet. It's only only thing is it's hundred episodes, so for the <laughs> first timer, that's like being thrown in a nine feet deep pool. Uh, but Mufti Kamani's is thirty episodes, so it's a quick one. Okay. You go through a quick run, and then if you have the stamina, I would recommend the hundred episodes. Alhamdulillah, I went through the entire hundred episodes, and. Uh, and now I'm, that I'm teaching Sirah, I get to go through what I call the Masadir, the original Ummahatul Kitab, the original sources. When you get it from the horse's mouth, it is so nice. Seal Nectar is really good, by the way, Sister Nadia, uh, especially in Arabic. The English translation is atrocious, but if you can get past that, uh, it's a phenomenal book. We have another comment that came in, Sister Hibbert. Um, was it a recommendation? Uh, Sister uh, Tight. Oh, I see. Um, I was last on one of the lives during Ramadan, and I'd only just come back from Islam just again. But then, alhamdulillah, it's been so much easier over this time. It's Barakal. crazy, like, how we're, you know, in quarantine, and some people are, you know, spending their time in some ways, and some people are utilizing their time in others. 
I think this is like you can, you know, there's always a silver lining to everything. I think that you can definitely use this time. Like we always say, oh, I don't have time to like read Quran or like, you know, listen to um, like a Sira series, for example. But I feel like now we do and it's summer. And so I think this is actually the perfect time to or even pick up a book or maybe listen to podcasts, like whatever you prefer. Absolutely. I really hope people come out of COVID, you know, with more than just learning how to make banana bread, you know. So inshallah awesome. we we, yeah, we ask we ask uh, hopefully see a podcast y'all i highly recommend this. i'm gonna keep you know beating the dead horse until hopefully inshallah somebody uh gets on the somebody gets on the the track inshallah um we're both I don't, uh, oh i'm sorry go ahead i was just gonna say you mentioned um two people's series were both of them podcasts or were one of them i don't remember exactly like both the, are podcasts Mufti, Mufti Kamani's is definitely a podcast. It's uh, Kalam. If you go on Kalam Archives, you should be able to find it there. Saad Murphy is on Spotify as well. So you should be able to find the Messenger series that they do through Heart. It's called the Heartwork series. Um, but that's mm -hmm. on Spotify. You can find it there. Um, Saad Murphy's is really awesome, especially for young professionals because it's specifically geared towards young professionals and, you know, sure. millennials, Gen mm -hmm. Z. So I recommend that, inshallah. Yeah, I've and, listened um, to the Heartwork series. I think it was. You did? Yeah. You have? Uh, not really? the whole thing. <laughs> gotcha. It's kind gotcha. of long. But yeah. That's awesome. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. Anna Sodi Allah, I have two, two more things to share about him. Towards the end of his life, this is such a. This is, this is heavy. This is about to get heavy. So, towards the end of his life, now, if you guys remember last time I mentioned Anas, the Prophet made dua for his life. So, he lived a long life. In fact, Anas was one of the last companions to pass away. So as he's getting older and older, he's looking around and there's no other companions alive except him. And he's getting really lonely and he's getting nostalgic. Anas used to say to his students, I'm the only one alive right now who prayed towards both Qiblas. Oh, wow. does, that, does that register with you, Mr. Hiba? That's, that's profound. Isn't it? Be because mm -hmm. you had to be there from day one with the Prophet ﷺ in Medina because that's oh, when they geez. prayed towards Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm the only one alive that prayed towards both Qiblas. And he's not like bragging. He's like, <laughs> this is my Just sorrow like that, that I'm still around like a fossil. Mm -hmm. um, and then like it, it really hit me when I read a hadith in Bukhari where Anas says, like I didn't understand this hadith until I understood the entire background. Anas says, Wallahi, he says, had it not been that I heard directly from the mouth of the Prophet وسلم, that do not make dua for death. He's like, had I not heard the Prophet specifically command that do not make dua for death, I would have asked Allah for death. Because I am so done with this life. I don't want to, like, he wants to be with the Prophet. He wants to be with Abu Bakr and Umar. He's like, I'm so old. Life had no attraction for him. Like, he was, like, ready for the hereafter. And, um, yeah, that's Anas Allah Horn for you. And uh, my last thing, the last thing I want to share, which is something I always say for last, uh, it's like the cherry on the top when it comes to his life. It's a beautiful hadith. Like, I have so much love for this hadith, and I hope Anas had deep love for this hadith, and through him, I have it as well. So I'll share this with you guys, and we'll end on this. Anas Allah Horn says, Hadith comes in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ was once sitting with the companions and a man walked in. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, mata sa'atu qa'ima. The Bedouin, rough. He's like, when is the day of judgment? Now, notice what he's asking. When is the day of judgment? Which no one knows. Jibreel doesn't know. The Prophet ﷺ doesn't know, as we're told. So he's like, when is the day of judgment? And the Prophet ﷺ geniusly, subtly changes the question and he says, what have you prepared for it? That's a better question. He's like, when is the day of judgment? The Prophet is like, what have you prepared for it? The man says, Ma aradattu shay'an illa inni uhibbu Allah wa Rasul. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I don't have much. In the way of prep, I don't have much to offer, except that I love Allah and His Messenger. So, so <laughs> Yeah, it, it affects me every time. Mm -hmm. And um, the Prophet says, Inna ma man ahbabta. This is a famous statement. She will be with those you love. When Anas heard this, 
He said, Ya Rasulullah, is that specifically for him or for all of us? The Prophet said, for all of you. Anas says, فَفَرِحْنَا يَوْمَ إِذِنْ فَرْحًا شَدِيدًا He's like, that day we experienced joy, the likes of which we had not experienced since we had accepted Islam. Because I understood, because of this statement, he's like, I understood and realized that my actions are not at the level of Abu Bakr and Umar. My deeds and accomplishments are not in the league of Abu Bakr and Umar. But if my actions won't qualify me for their league, my love surely will. Mm-hmm. So it was through lo- loving and longing and yearning, you can reach the level that you can't specifically through these. You know what that means, y'all? Your love for Allah and His Messenger gap, uh, sorry, patches the gaps that you have in your resume, your spiritual resume. It's amazing. Oh. We ask Allah for this love. We ask Allah for this emotional commitment. Anyone can academically study the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but all this, you connect with him emotionally, spiritually. That's when your Islam mm-hmm. goes to the next level, and that's what we're trying to accomplish through this series as well. Ya Rab. Mm-hmm. So you guys. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Anas radiallahu anh passed away year 93 Hijri. That's almost 80 years after the Prophet sallallahu He lived a long life, started an entire legacy of scholarship in Basra. If you ever heard the name Hassan al-Basri and Anas Muhammad ibn Sirin and Qatada and Hisham ibn al-Dastuwai, so many names that come through the uh, mentorship of Anas radiallahu anh. May Allah bless his soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be with them in the day of judgment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, that's what I wanted to present today. Any, any thoughts, any comments? Uh, none that came in from the audience. Mm. Um, or no, there was one. The lives during Ramadan that you did during Ramadan definitely helped a lot. Alhamdulillah. And yes. I think she she's uh, had another comment. During quarantine, I learned how Islam was right because I was so wrong and grew up born in a Muslim family, but no one was taught about Islam within the family because of personal problems and watching different things. SubhanAllah. That's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy, sister. I, I don't know the name. Is that, um, <laughs> is that who I think it is? But again, I don't want to be wrong. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, keep you strong. Um, thank you so much once again. You guys, thank you once again for tuning in. Sister Heba, I really appreciate you making the time. It's my pleasure. Coming live. Barakallahu feek. Barakallahu feek. Inshallah, we hope to see you more often. Inshallah, for sure. Inshallah. You guys take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.